While the original Nintendo Entertainment System is often seen as Nintendo's foray into the home console market, like most arcade companies of the time, Nintendo also licensed their arcade properties to other publishers for home console and computer releases. This means some of their most popular early 80s arcade games were ported to the classic Atari 2600. To celebrate this amazing mashup of Nintendo goodness and Atari charm, on today's episode of 5 Games, I present 5 Nintendo games on the Atari 2600. First up is Donkey Kong, ported to the Atari 2600 by Coleco in 1982. This version of Donkey Kong is most famous for being one of the worst. For starters, it contains just two of the four levels found in the arcade game. Next, the Donkey Kong sprite is pretty suspect, looking more like a gingerbread man than a great ape. Lastly, the levels are simplified, and as best as I can tell, the challenge does not increase with each loop. Still, I've always found this version of Donkey Kong rather enjoyable for what it is. The controls are responsive, and jumping over enemies and climbing up ladders is a drama-free experience. With decent controls, the objective of scoring points becomes a fun time for me. The goal is to beat the level as quickly as possible, as the point total for the level starts at 5,000 and then decreases as the seconds go by. This creates a fun risk versus reward mechanic that is inherently addicting, as taking more risks rewards more points, but also increases your chance of something going wrong and losing a life. While most, if not all, ports of Donkey Kong are superior, if you're like me and the Atari 2600 is your pre-NES console of choice, Donkey Kong provides a decent amount of entertainment for an extremely affordable price. Next up is Sky Skipper, ported to the Atari 2600 by Parker Brothers in 1983. The original arcade game was a Japanese exclusive, while this Atari 2600 version was a North American exclusive, and also an Atari 2600 exclusive, never seeing a release on any other platform. As best as I can figure, your goal is to bomb an angry gorilla, which will knock him out, temporarily opening up a bunch of animal cages. During this period, you need to fly into the cats, turtles, rabbits, and ducks to rescue them. All of this must be done before your gas tank runs out of fuel. After rescuing all of the animals, you beat the stage. The Satari port has two levels, and with each loop, the game becomes more difficult. On the second loop, deadly clouds are added to the playfield, and on the third loop, Loop, your plane picks up speed. All of this happens on a smooth scrolling playfield with no flicker whatsoever. Unfortunately, I just don't find this very fun to play. It plays sort of like a maze game, except touching the balls results in death. While the controls are responsive for sure, the whole game concept just doesn't result in a lot of fun. As your plane doesn't stop and can move diagonally, it's all too easy to accidentally crash into the walls, forcing you to start over. Additionally, as you often have to wait for cloud patterns, the animal traps will close, forcing you to rebound the gorilla and start over, only there really isn't enough fuel for a second go. The end result is a game that lacks the balance and finesse found in better games from the era. While a neat curiosity for sure, Skyskipper is probably best avoided. Of course, one can't talk about Nintendo games on the Atari without mentioning Donkey Kong Jr., ported to the 2600 by Coleco in 1983. If I'm honest, this is not a strong title, not even by Atari 2600 standards. The graphics are definitely below average, and you really have to use your imagination to make this feel like a jungle. The Donkey Kong Jr. sprite is especially laughable and doesn't really resemble, well, anything. The second and third level also feature a ton of flicker, which not only makes this video impossible to watch at less than 60 frames per second, but also makes all of the enemies difficult to spot when playing the game. 
The gameplay is also a bit janky, and getting yourself off the vine feels less than responsive. Once you do finally get a handle on all of the gameplay nuances, Donkey Kong Jr. is relatively pain-free, but as far as I can tell, nothing changes with each loop, making for a fairly boring experience. And then there's the sound of Junior climbing, which can best be described as obnoxious. Perhaps Donkey Kong Jr. was simply too ambitious for the Atari 2600, or maybe Coleco got a little lazy with this port, but whatever the case, I can't recommend this one. Next up is Popeye, ported to the Atari 2600 by Parker Brothers, also in 1983. This is a surprisingly competent port of the arcade game, featuring all three stages, background music, and most of the gameplay mechanics from the original. The main goal is to collect the trinkets olive oil is dropping from the top of the screen. After collecting one, it is tracked on the grid in the upper left corner. Additionally, after grabbing a trinket, a projectile will come at you from the opposite side of the screen. You you can either avoid it or punch it for points. Finally, you must do all of this while avoiding Brutus, who can jump up or down and punch Popeye, as well as shoot projectiles. The game is actually somewhat tricky at first, as you learn all of the gameplay nuances, and I'd argue it's more complex than your average Atari game. But once you get past the initial learning curve, Popeye is a deep and entertaining romp. I should note the set pieces in the second stage can be tough to see, though slightly easier on a CRT, and the game features features a ton of flicker, though I never found it to hinder the on-screen items like it did in Donkey Kong Jr. Rounding things out, the game actually gets harder on the second loop, with faster projectiles, and I'll mention it again, this game has actual background music, which I find to be pretty awesome. All in all, Popeye is a fun game, and a must-own for the system. Last but not least is Mario Brothers, ported by Atari in, you guessed it, 1983. The goal of Mario Brothers is to hit enemies from below, which will temporarily paralyze them. After this, you need to run into them to clear them off the board. Once you clear all of the enemies, you beat the stage and the next one is presented. As the game wears on, the enemies become more difficult, sometimes needing two hits to knock them down. Other enemies jump, leaving you less room to get in a hit, and others move extremely fast. You even trickier is a fireball roaming across the three levels, giving you an item you must avoid at all costs, potentially ruining your strategy. There is also a block at the bottom of the screen, which will register a hit on all of the on-screen enemies, offering some extra strategy to the gameplay. While not the best looking game on this list, the Mario sprite is charming with blue overalls and a blue hat. And all of the enemies feature a couple frames of animation. The flickering is again prominent, but because all of the sprites are nice and big, it's never an issue. It's also worth noting a second player can join in, but I didn't get a chance to test it. Mario Brothers is definitely a good Atari game, and there is something inherently cool seeing an official Mario game on the system. If you can find this one for a reasonable price, it's definitely worth a look. So there you have it, 5 Nintendo games for the Atari 2600.